we want to solve the given equation over the interval from zero to two pi. We have three sine two x plus four cosine x equals zero. We'll perform a substitution using a double angle identity for sine two x given here below, where sine two x would be equal to two times sine x times cosine x. So we'd have three times, again, two sine x times cosine x, and then we'd have plus four cosine x equals zero. So simplifying here, we'd have six sine x cosine x plus four cosine x equals zero. The greatest common factor between these two terms would be two cosine x. So let's go ahead and factor out two cosine x. We'd have two cosine x times the quantity three sine x, and then we'd have just plus two. Now that this is in factored form, this product will be zero when two cosine x equals zero, or when three sine x plus two equals zero. Well, dividing both sides by two, notice how we would just have cosine x equals zero, or solving here for sine x, we would subtract two and divide by three, we'd have sine x equals negative two-thirds. So we're going to find all the angles in this interval where cosine x equals zero and sine x equals negative two-thirds. Notice in this interval, zero is included and two pi is not included. Let's find these angles on the next slide. Well, we should be able to recognize that cosine x equals zero when the x-coordinate is equal to zero, since cosine theta equals x over r, or if we need to, we can look at the unit circle, where again, cosine theta equals x, and notice that x is zero at this point and this point, and therefore two solutions to our equation would be pi over two radians as well as three pi over two radians. So let's record those solutions. We'll say x sub one is equal to pi over two radians x sub two is equal to three pi over two radians. These are the only two angles over the interval from zero to two pi where cosine x would equal zero. And now we need to find the angles where sine x would be equal to negative two thirds. We won't find the sine function value on the unit circle, so we'll have to use the calculator to get decimal approximations. If sine x equals negative two thirds, to solve this equation for x, we would take the inverse sine or arc sine on both sides of the equation, which would give us x is equal to inverse sine of negative two-thirds. And now we'll go to the calculator to help us find x. We first want to verify we are in radian mode, so we'll press the mode key. Notice how we are in radian mode, so we'll go back to the home screen, and now we'll press second sine for inverse sine, and then negative two divided by three, close parenthesis, and enter. Notice how this is giving us an angle that is outside our interval, but we can still use this to help us find our solutions. So let's go ahead and write this down. X is approximately negative 0 0.7297. Let's sketch this angle in a standard position. The initial side would be here, and the terminal side might be somewhere in here. Even though the rotation would be in this direction, Notice how this does tell us the reference angle would be 0 0.7297. And we can use this reference angle to help us find the angles in the interval from zero to two pi. One of those angles would start here and rotate counterclockwise in this direction. This angle would be two pi radians minus the reference angle of 0 0.7297, which does give us one more solution. So we'll say x sub three would be approximately two pi minus the approximate reference angle of 0 0.7297. And now we'll go back to the calculator. So two pi minus 0.7297. This angle would have a sine function value of negative two thirds, approximately 5.5535 radians.
But since sine theta is equal to y over r, and y is also negative in the third quadrant here, if we sketch the same reference angle in the third quadrant, we can find another solution in this interval. So the angle that terminates here with the same reference angle would have the same sine function value. And this angle would be this angle here. To find this angle, we'll take pi radians and add the reference angle of 0 0.7297. So our fourth solution in this interval, we'll call it sub four, would be approximately pi radians plus the approximate reference angle of 0 0.7297. And back to the calculator one more time. So now we have pi plus point seven two nine seven, which would be approximately three point eight seven one three radians. So our equation has four solutions over this interval, one, two, three, and four. Notice two of these are exact solutions and two of these are decimal approximations. I hope you found this helpful.